Table podcast. I'm your boy Corey G at Small Arms Danny at Trey Speed and the graphic gangster himself, Cole Susak. What up, Sam Adams? Brought to you by Max Effort, Sam Adams. We got part two with Anthony Oliveira. What's West good? Side Stories, yeah, Squat fuck Stories, yeah. fucking Hoff Stories, Anthony Oliveira Stories. Yeah. We're just going to talk about training. Crack Check. Yeah, crack Check, Sam Adams, uh, Just the Haze, all fucking day. Get your, get your crack Check. Pack. Yeah, crack Check, here we go. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Sound of wet. Danny, yeah. on, on a no scale way. of like uh, one to six, nine, what, what do you keep saying? <laughs> <one to six, laughs> definitely a six or nine. Nice. Yeah, nice. six or nine. Strong. 6.9%. Six yeah. Strong. Strong. No. Strong six, nine, yeah. <laughs> Jeez. All right, Anthony, first off, if you haven't listened to the last episode, go back because that was a sick ass business episode. Yes. So, fucking great work on that. Now we're going to talk, talk about why you got a fucking business, right? <laughs> lifting so, weights. Yeah, lifting motherfucking weights. I want to start before you get to West Side, just so we have a background, is like, what kind of weights were you hitting before you made, uh, you know, the drive to Columbus with $600 to go to West Side Barbell? Uh, so, like, how strong were you So, already? I did, my first meet I ever did, I went uh, 505 squat, three. 25 bench and a 575 pull at 220 raw raw okay uh drug tested the whole thing mm -hmm. how old were you uh fucking a dude uh, it's 28 okay 27 something like that so you started a, a little bit later then. yeah okay. i had already done like college sports i had already like you're a hockey guy. I already had a drug addiction that I had gotten over. Yeah, yeah, so, I got gotcha. <laughs> like, you. I, I had lived like a whole life before that, um, but I had a lot of salt on the hull because I had like skateboarded my whole life. I had already yeah. had a knee surgery. Like, uh, was a goalie. what'd you say? Salt on the what? Salt on the hull. Salt, all, salt on the hull. Like a what? ship like that's been in the water yeah. for oh. a long okay, time. Okay, okay, like okay. Sam. Like, like I'm, yeah, yeah, like yeah. Sam Adams. Shout out to Sam exactly. Adams. Yeah, uh, yeah. So like <laughs> salt on the hull. Yeah, like kind of. Like I've never fucking heard that. Like kind of, like kind of beat down. Like uh, yeah, yeah. I got it. Uh, but yeah, so all right. Fuck that it. was my first <laughs> one, and then my first, uh, <laughs> my first multiply meet. I went like seven fifty five, four fifty five, six forty. Okay. And I didn't cut to two twenty for that one. Um, but then like my big, my like breakout sort of meet for the area that I was in, I totaled 2000 at 220. I went like, oh, okay. 850, four, four eighty six seventy something like that. Right. Um, and that was a 220 in multiply. And then the, uh, yeah. And then I, I tore my meniscus at a hardcore show and had to get surgery. Like performing. No. No, oh, like head like, walking, in a like jumping off the stage and trying to oh, walk shit. on people's heads and I fell. <laughs> and whatever. <laughs> so just normal. <laughs> so, so uh I have like videos from that show too. That was it was like I it like happened. Prove like, it. Like, that no, kind of yeah. like felt weird. And I went in the bathroom and like there I am like wide stance squatting at a hardcore show in the bathroom. Like, is my knee fucked up? I think it is. So um I always say it's mostly other yeah. shit. It's never yeah, it's always like some dumb shit. Yeah, so, yeah. I uh, so then my first meet after that I totaled twenty one hundred went nine oh five five something six Damn. something, um, and that was like my tryout meet for Westside. That All was right. after I had gone I had like gone there and done a circle max with them. Um, actually, <clears throat> yeah, I squatted that eight fifty uh, to total the two thousand. Got hurt. Then I was coming out for a push pull, and when we were driving up. Uh, Brian Silfies called me, my, the guy who he actually bought the gym yeah. from, uh, called me. He was like, oh, I was talking to Lou, and he said, you know, why don't you try out or something, like kind of half jokingly. And I was like, I got off the phone, and I'm like, looking in the car, I'm like, uh, I guess I'm going to try out for West. I don't fucking yeah. know. Like, you know, this was when me and Val were not dating. We were just training partners. Okay. But we were in the car together with our other training partner. I'm like, it's lit. I don't know. Like, I, I don't Let's know what's going on. So when we show it, we pull up, and Lou's like, hey, man, like, what are you going to do this weekend? I'm like, uh, I'm going to bench five, pull seven, and then I'm going to come in here on Monday and squat nine. It just, like, came out of my mouth. Yeah. My best squat was 850, and I hadn't put on a canvas since I blew my knee off. So, like, yeah. Fuck yeah. We'll just see, you know? Fucking and I, I did yeah. that. And I did that. Hell I did yeah. all that. And uh, then um, I was like, he's like, why don't you, uh, you should do this meet with us in West Virginia. And I was like, cool, yeah, I'll do it. Like, I don't care. Like, I'll go. And uh, I was like, in like, eight weeks or something like that. And then when we left, Tom Barry called Brian and was like, Lou would like him to come back for Circa Max. So I Fuck came back, yeah. I squatted six plates and a quarter plus blue and greens to a box. And mm. then I asked, I asked him, I was like, what do I have to do to train here? 
And he's like, you can move out here right now. Fuck. And yeah. I was like, sick. Like, let me do this meet. So the kind of this, I don't think I've told this on this podcast before, but we were at the meet. My best pull in a full meet was 670. Mm-hmm. My best pull was 705. It was a push pull. And like people who don't know, like that's a big difference in multiply full meet and a push pull. For sure. Like squatting and then having. Squatting takes a lot out of you. Yeah. Yeah. Especially like I squat so wide, like a lot of hip, whatever. And I was like, I think I'm going to open with like 630, whatever. And Brian's like, don't be a pussy. Like open 675. Like the fuck's the matter with you? And I like, I look and Tommy was there and I was just like, what do you think, man? Like, I don't know. Like, and he's like, well, it's not like you don't have a. Or he goes, it's not like you've got a invite to West Side weighing in the balance on this one or anything. And I was like, oh, this is a tryout meet. I already quit my fucking job. Like, <laughs> <laughs> you didn't, like, you was, thought like, I was I had, already in. I had no idea. Like yes. I had already squatted 905 in that meet and whatever. But I was like, holy shit. So I went out, pulled. I opened with 675, which was a five pound full meet PR. Hmm. And then I missed 710 twice. But because I was like missing it right at the top, Lou was like, if you come to the gym, like when you come to the gym, you have no, you have no ass. He was like, in three months, I'll put, he goes, in, I'll put a hundred pounds on your squat in three months. And I moved out there in September. And in December, I squatted a thousand five. And my best squat was 905. No shit. Yeah. Like straight up. Like I've had a lot of weird stuff go on with Lou. We have a very, like we have yeah. not great relationship, but that was the moment. But he was, said it and he did it. He said it in a hundred percent. Well, like. I fucking you did, did it, it but, but yeah. he, 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 yeah. kinda, he led the way and um, cause Lou would have like pets, mm-hmm. you know, and I was like his new toy. So for those first three months, he just followed me around the gym and was like, you don't do anything besides hip thrusts in the belt squat and fucking reverse hypers till you puke. Basically like you do those two things. What was the watch. volume like? Was it daily? Was it three times a week? Was it? Uh, I was on a reverse hyper every time I went in the building. Come. Um, and then. Basically, at that point, we were still doing, like, weird squat variations on Monday. So, like, we'd go in, you have no idea what you're doing. Like, all right, I guess we're doing Cambridge Bar with bands over the plates to a one rep max to a box. Like, you yeah. know, that sort of stuff. And so we would do that, and then I would, like, crush. Like, my training back then was set up way more wild. And I think that, because people will look at that stuff. Like, I don't have my guy. My, my guys squat once a week now. Yeah. They deadlift on Mondays. They squat on Fridays. Like, it's not like speed and max effort. It's, yeah. those are the two days. Sometimes we're doing speed pulls. Sometimes we're it. doing speed squats, like sometimes heavy, whatever. And, uh, but back then, like people would be like, well, you squatted every Monday and you this. And it's like, well, first of all, you're not me. <laughs> so there's that. I also like, <laughs> <laughs> I like, so there's that. So there's that. Like I, I started preparing for my Monday morning squat session at like 10 AM on Sunday. Yeah. And you can't get to the gym three days a week. So <laughs> don't, it's different. Right. Yeah. So, but I think it's kind of a battle of attrition because sometimes you have to do the crazy shit to get over the hump. That's a fact. But you got to stay whole. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you got to during the crazy shit, you got to kind of be crazy. It's like, so there's like, I saw guys come in there who couldn't, and it sounds like I'm not beating my chest. Some people are just not built to do that shit and stay in one piece. Yeah. And so you'd see guys come in and they fucking fall apart. And I'm not saying that in like, like a, I'm tougher than you. It's like, yeah. dude, I look at stuff that like some you know, dudes aren't durable, bro. Yeah. And, and, and some guys can't train that way. And, and like, even when I was there, like I'd look at Chuck in his old age doing stuff and be like, man, I could never train like that. That doesn't mean that you're tougher than me. That means your leverages and your fucking genetics allow you to do that because mm-hmm. of where your tendon insertions are yeah. or whatever. But, uh, like, so I got through that point, you know, where I was really training like a crazy maniac. My volume was through the fucking roof and we, did extra workouts too. So yeah. on Monday, Wednesday, fr- Monday, Wednesday, Friday, like secondary workouts, yeah, twice a day. Yeah. So when I first got there, I was doing a thousand reps of abs every day. I fuck with that. So and I was like, dude, like, I, like you guys probably look at me now like I'm a fat guy compared to the dudes that you train with. Y'all are mm-hmm. all, but like when I first moved out there, like I was like two twenty eight and fucking jacked. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? So like. I was doing abs every day. And I feel well, that like, had a, probably a lot to do with your squat going up 100 pounds too, right? Because your yeah. fucking brace was crazy yeah. compared to what it was. Abs, like, you know, just the, the change in stimulus and yeah. like all that stuff. So I, I was, I had a good base, 
And like I was at the time, like significantly more wild than I am now. Mm -hmm. So like now if I start squatting and like my groin hurts or something, I'm like, I'm out. Yeah. Shut it down. Like I'm not doing this. You would have done that. Then I'm like, I don't give a fuck. Like, you know, we, we squatted on Christmas morning one time. And Val, and Val, <laughs> so, hold on, hold on. So Tony started a conversation when he was on the podcast where he's like, you know, the first time I ever put a squat suit on, it was Christmas Day. And I'm like, you just he just said it like it was so not matter. Yo, the only thing that changed was we didn't eat at Bob Evans. We <laughs> ate at Waffle House that day because Bob's was closed. <laughs> that was the only thing that changed. And like, so because of that, like there was a kind of a strict like no girlfriend yeah. policy. I mean, I say strict, but <laughs> depending on who was there, whatever. Mm. So uh Val came with that day. Mm-hmm. There were a couple girls that came in because it was Christmas morning. Lou kind of allowed it. And I had this crazy, like, basically, like, pelvic floor. So, like, your taint. Like, I had a crazy injury down there that bothered me for fucking years. It was fucked. That's crazy. Um, and she hadn't seen me squat live in a long time. We did a free squat. Briefs and bare knees. I did, like, 9, 10 or something. And... Like she came over to me before my briefs even came off and she's like, you need to go to the fucking doctor, dude. Like you look like you're going to explode. Like you, you, like you are injured. You need to fucking stop. Like you need to see someone about this. Cause I was just like, I'm fine. I'd come back and be like, I'm fine. It's not too bad. That's a great conversation to bring up to your doctor. Yeah. I'm just like, well, I'm trying to squat more weight than you can conceive. <laughs> I, have a, I have a sharp pain between my balls. And <laughs> my, <laughs> my taint's broken. <laughs> like Dan, Dan, just, Danny loves this. You know, like the, the crazy part about it though is that. But it's real. It's, yeah. yeah. And like, they, so it get a little, a little woo woo here. Like I did everything that you could do. I did dry needling on my, adductors i did every pt you could possibly think yeah of. and i guess like men carry stress there like okay. it's one of those things dude when i left west side the first time i never felt that pain again the first week i was training at sweatshop it went away the first fucking week dude i shit you not it just i was just like <sighs> so that's an actual thing that's an actual thing men carry stress in their taint in their ta- taint well, stress it's your pelvic floor uh, bro I have taint stress <laughs> bro, bro. <laughs> You might have taint stress. I might dude. because you already, <laughs> you already said taint, so the train yeah, is left the station. Yeah, 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 sorry. Like, well, sorry, you know, I, 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 I guess it's not directly my. I need taint alcohol area. in my beard now. <laughs> I think. It's, yeah, because it's not directly my taint area, but it's the out, it's the outer taint area, like my hips and stuff like yeah, that. You might have taint Jeez. stress, but guys. it goes away whenever I fucking wrap up, and it might be just because my body needs to build you're, my taint. Yeah, your yeah, you know, shock is like, Of course, there's an inner and outer taint. Yeah. So. And what does this crystal do? <laughs> Just sit on the crystal. Yeah. Yeah. No, but for real, well, I was like, but real life, talk so though, this is real. Okay, back back All on right. the rails. For real, please. so like, yeah, so I. Jesus, stuff. that was good. That was I good. Knew it had yeah, a pot- I knew it had a potential. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, so as soon as I like, actually, as soon as I left, like, it stopped hurting, which is crazy. But like, it did, it it did happen. But yeah, so like, long story long, my training there was wild. Yeah fucking wild but that's uh, also when you went to an entirely different level yeah i mean so like, that's I part went of from it. in uh i think i did oh fuck it was like i did like 12 meets or 11 meets in 18 months oh wow like i just fucking Holy i shit. went from 905 to 1075 yeah in my squat like it was like everybody was like who the fuck is this guy what was funny was if i had squatted 100 pounds less i would have looked like a better lifter because if you look at somebody and they go 975, 580, 720. You're like, okay. Hmm. But if they go 1075, 580, 720, gotcha. you go, what's wrong with this dude's bench? <laughs> yeah. Literally. Like, like people are like, what the fuck's wrong with your bench? It's like, I outtotal you by 200 pounds. But they're like, yeah, but I bench seven something. Yeah. yeah, you know, yeah. It was like, well, what's wrong with your squat, bitch? I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> so, like, so, like, it was weird because my squat got so good and my bench got. Louis's downfall was he didn't know how to coach a bench shirt. That was the big thing. Yeah. And, and a lot so, of the big benchers back in the day were so good raw, too. They're all benching 550 raw Correct. and and big, big men. Yeah. Um, and or or small bench specialists. So like Jay Fry, yeah, Freddie so Bolt, like, those guys. Yeah. yeah. So like it was a little different for them and trying to trying to take someone who like my squat volume was crazy so like i'd go in i mean i squatted six plates and two blue bands and briefs on a safety squat bar 
You know what I mean? Like yeah. I, I, I did some pretty wild <laughs> shit there <laughs> and it's hard to figure out when to put on the bench shirt Yeah. after something like that and all that. That's where Dave really helped was mm -hmm. lining stuff up where he's like, dude, like don't try to do three hard things in one week. Yeah. yeah what yeah. are you doing? You know what I mean? Especially and, with the weight that you guys are handling. Yeah. And being a smaller person, that was something me and Lou butted heads about because mm -hmm. it was like, you're not really used to guys my size squatting these weights. Mm -hmm. At that time, like there was a big jump in the squats in the gym because I think honestly, because I showed up and I was like the new guy who really pushed the squats, Yep. you know? And so like, you know, me and John Armistead mm -hmm. and, you know, like Coker and these guys, like our squats kind of went up, but then it's like, you look around and it's like not many guys under 250 pounds squatting four digits in here. No. So you can't really compare the abuse on a 300 pound dude's body so different, bro. versus a dude who's walking around at 250. It's just di like, bro, like you can't or like 200. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> like you can't like it's just different. Like, oh, uh, weights like a max effort is a max effort. But there is another realm of yeah. like we're both made out of flesh and bone. So like what 1100 pounds does to me yeah. is different than what a top end for an 800 pound squatter does to them. For sure. If we're similar size. So, um, I had to change a bunch of stuff, but when I first got there, it was like balls out, like marathon fucking two and a half hour workouts, like just fucking killing ourselves in there. Do you fuck with it though? Like you were signing oh, up for, oh, I like... was like, I was bought in. Bro. Yeah. Like, I was like, the Kool-Aid had been drank. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I was, I was in it. I was fuck everything outside of this. And, um, but I mean, it elevated the fuck out of me, my business. Um, it taught me a lot of stuff that like, there's that like quote from the West Side versus the world. Like, you know what Bob Coe says, like, Oh, Lou taught me more about being a man than my dad did about, and all this stuff. And that may have been his experience. But for me, it was like West Side showed me a lot of stuff that I did not want to be. Sure. But for a while, I did want it. You know I what I'm that, saying? Yeah, I think that's good. So when I was there, I was like, yeah, fighting and, you know, this. But, yeah. like, as I got older, I was like, I don't really, like, I'm an athlete. I want to, like, lift weights and be successful in business and, you know, like, have a good relationship with my wife and all that stuff. So I learned a lot there, like an incredible amount on both sides of it. Yeah. Um, and I think that, like, my association with that building, good, bad, or indifferent, kind of showed people who I was Hell as a yeah. person. And I think that because I documented so much of it on social media, that people have been able to see the growth mm -hmm. and people like identify with that. Um, you know, this dude, Mark Chico, he's a big raw bencher. Uh, I remember, I think it was when I totaled 2,500, he texted me. He either texted me or commented on it saying like, you know, when you first came on the scene in Ohio, you were just some fucking dude with tattoos and a big mouth. <laughs> and he's right. Yeah and, yeah. and and now you've actually done something to back that up. Fuck with that. And it took me a while to get to that point. Like that whole confidence first cocky yeah. thing. Like it took me a while to figure that out. when I first got there, I was like, this is it. Like I am. I have totally bought in. The only thing I didn't do was get the tattoo because it's a bad luck. Yeah, no, everyone that does ends up it's, gone. There's some, <laughs> something fucked up. Unless you're Amy. Me. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. She's, dude, Amy, shout out Amy. She's Weber. amazing. She's the best ever. Every time I see her, I give her a big She's hug. She's unreal. She's like was always so kind to me and my wife. She was always super nice Val, to me too. Val said that she's her favorite training partner she ever had. She's just relentless, dude tough and bitch, she was dude. she was putting tough. up crazy numbers back in the day yeah people weren't even fucking close to her when she first came out right yeah. i mean i like, mean even she, in yeah. her older age like i mean you're looking at some woman in her fucking mid 40s and she's still squatting like five something yeah she like, squatted jesus. six the first time i went to the gym like, jesus christ and i was like okay well i squat i think six ten go but fuck yeah go fuck myself <laughs> yeah. what do they say what do they say like get uh like more, more guys have been thrown out of that gym because oh. of Amy than any other reason. No fucking just, question. <laughs> get embarrassed. Yeah, you know dude. I mean? And she weighed like 150 pounds. Yeah. That's Fuck, all I'm like. For fuck's sake. Yeah, dude. We would do I'm that with Val with Night Crew when guys would come in. Yeah, and I'm they, sure. They'd want to fucking whatever. And it's like, well, Val's first set in her briefs is 295 plus five chains in yeah. briefs. So like. <laughs> Our, and we're doing, and there's we're the doing, parking lot. And we're, doing, <laughs> we're doing triples. Bro. Yeah. So like, and that's her first set. So she's going to be around four plates by the time we're done. Like, 
what are you doing? Like, I mean, you know, yeah. I, I was there when or I was. That's one of the best like, checks of all time, bro. Dude, yeah, like the the girl who's under two hundred pounds. That's that's why, like, you know what I mean? Like, she, it's like there's nothing arguable about it. It's like we one dude came in, he's big, big guy, probably. Oh, he was big, like three hundred yeah. plus, soft, soft. He did two sets and then laid on the floor and was like, I hurt my my hip or whatever. This was at Doghouse, and we're like, yeah. No. Yeah, sure. Val, Val just snapped one off in your butt. Bro. No. <laughs> like, your confidence like, just got fucking. I'm sorry. Hammered. Like I seen her do. She did five plates, five plates, five chains on an 85 pound camber bar, uh, for two and just briefs. An 85 pound. And she had, bar. and she had, she had like either torn an ab or popped a rib out. So like, I was actually in New Hampshire. I was sponsoring me. I had driven out there by myself, and she sends me a video. She got two fucking belts on. I'm like, hey, what? what are you in the fucking mummy crew? Like, yeah, you know, like the, <laughs> yeah, like what's going on? And she's like, oh, I popped a rib, so he just like, I don't know, he just put a belt on it. And then like, when she got leaner this year, she's like, I don't think I popped a rib. I think I tore one of my abs because she's got like she a divot. Yeah. She's got like a divot. In her That's ass. fucking. That's and wild. I was like, you fucking savage. And I wasn't there Psycho. for it. I'm like, and that to me was like kind of a, a wake up call to me where it was just like. Yo, she is fucking on another level with yeah, yeah. this shit. So I think people miss that. I have a question. Whenever she's like, because it's got to be cool for you to watch her squat these heavyweights and do this crazy shit. Yeah. Does, do you like yell at her? Like, what's the support like? Dude, like, what are, are you turned on? Like, what's yeah, happening? Yeah, what's going on? <laughs> all of the, all of the, all of the above. My <laughs> 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 <It's laughs> like quarter chub, quarter chub. So, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I'd yes. say yes. nervous a little bit. I do get like. Obviously now, like she's stepped away from the sport and she does like, uh, she does like raw lifting and, and she trains in the mono next to us, but she's still probably my vo- most valuable training partner. For sure. She just tells me exactly how the fuck it is. But, uh, yeah, like funny, you should say, what do I say to her? So we're training. This was at West side when she, we had gotten <clears throat> invited back and it was probably like her second or third time squatting with the group. Now she's used to doing like two plates, plate quarter and a green band for speed work for squats down at sweatshop. She shows up and all of a sudden we're using five chains on a camber bar and Dave's like, what do you squat? All right, cool. Three plates. And she's like, holy shit. She's getting fucking destroyed. Yeah. Uh, so she's walking up to a weight and or the other girl, Jamie, Jeff's wife had, had walked up and he's like, let's go, bitch. Like, come on. And I heard that and I was like, Ooh, OK. And then so then Val is walking up to the bar and Dave's like, let's go, bitch. Come on, motherfucker. And I was like sitting there. I'm like, I was kind of on tilt, like. Is she gonna flip out? And she's just like, oh, "Got him." Yeah. Like, it's okay if he says it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gonna, this is like I'm a whole different say, dynamic out here. Say, um, you say I'm, it, but I'm not gonna. Yeah, I'm not gonna say okay, a yeah. fucking thing. I'm just yeah. gonna spot her and shut the fuck up. But yeah, she. Uh, we used to get pretty rowdy with her when she was doing that stuff, and I look back on it now, and it's like so fucking sick to me because. Oh yeah. We were talking to some uh, chick the other day who was having a hard time with like recovery, and you know. And she's like, how did you do it? And Val's like, yo, I literally ate everything I fucking saw. She's like, I just ate. And that's how I had to, to recover. Like I just yeah. had to do it working in, in a restaurant, working doubles, 10 hours. Yeah, she's on her feet, on feet all the time and still being able to hang with us. Like she's like, and she was talking about the other night and I'm like, that's so sick to me, even though she's walked away from it. I respect that and everything she's doing, but like thinking back on it, I'm like, man, you're she's all fucking in. savage. And because of when she left the time frame, like, all of a sudden girls started when she started squatted 700 like there weren't many girls doing that and now there's like a handful of them who have squatted like high sevens yeah but that happened like right she kind of like kicked the door down and then walked away yeah so like i think people like kind of miss but like mm. she has like three top 10 all-time squats you yeah. know a bunch of her bench is like top four in her weight class whatever um in a real bencher um and uh so like it's sick like to yeah. to think about that now I, yeah, but long, again, long story long, I didn't yell at her much. You know what I mean? I would just be like, let's fucking go. And she, the sick part about Val is she get bloody noses with heavyweights. Mm. So she looked way tougher than I looked. Talk about, <laughs> yeah. talk, about, talk about getting turned on. Like, watch your wife squat 700 pounds, get a bloody nose. I'm like, let's, that is let's fucking, go somewhere. You can't even, <laughs> like, <laughs> turn. Yeah. <laughs> Point so good, dude. Uh, talk to me about making that big squat, taking Greg off the board, writing your name on the board, which, you know, is, I guess, really the, the top of, of all top, to be to have yeah. your name on there, however long it lasts, um, right? I mean, I posted it 
I remember when I posted it, I was like, uh, it was 1065, 1065 at yeah. 242. I posted it and I just said like, this is what I came here for. Yeah. You know what Fuck I mean? Yeah. Like this is what I came here for and what I plan on doing. And that squat was fucking buried too. I, that one was like, it was that good. One. 1065 and 1075 were both 1070 was like three inches high, but the, uh, <laughs> those other two were, were buried and, um, getting your name on that board is, is epic. And obviously I don't have a, you know, have a lot of mixed feelings about West side and all that stuff, but you can't take that away from me. That's like one of those things where, um, I feel fortunate that I was healthy enough to be able to do that. Yeah. But it's also one of those things where, like, I can kind of bang my chest and be like, yeah, I fucking did that. Hell yeah. There's tons of people who came in those doors <clears throat> with the same training partners, with the same environment, and couldn't do that. And to take off a squat like Greg had at that weight class. Yeah. It was fucking. And, and, and Greg, like, you know, <laughs> when Lou said, uh, you know, Lou would say, like, he's one of the strongest guys that ever walked in the building. Yep. And so to take him off the board was really cool. And then to do it again, you know, and, and take my and up my own number again. Um, and now it's been it's a bummer because they said they froze that board now. Yeah, they're not going to change anything. There were two guys that came in after me that took my name down, which sucks because it wasn't up there. But something Dave said to me when I first got up there, he's like, it's not just your name in that square. Yeah. It's everybody who came before you. Yeah. That's and, true. Uh, and you're part Damn. of part of history there because your number, my number is not 1065. If Greg's was not 1060 facts and his was not 1060. If I, it's kind of like when you see someone, when like as soon as someone ran a three minute mile or whatever, a bunch yeah. of other motherfuckers did it. Yeah. And so that's sort of like, it was a big fucking deal to me, dude. And I try to be kind of, it like, is a big deal. Yeah. Like that, that's something that for me, legacy, you know, is really important to me. And, being from New Hampshire where strength culture isn't huge, we're working on changing that. It's cool to come from a place like that and be like, I mean, I was basically self-taught to 905. Hell yeah. I didn't start getting help until I was fucking fucking around with four-digit squats. So I take a lot of pride in that. And, and I take a lot of pride that, like, my body of work, when you look at, like, my biggest lifts in the weight classes, they were done to a, a pretty good standard. And I'm not one to get into, like, judging this and whatever and you get what the judges give you sure um and i'll never apologize for getting a squat pass that maybe shouldn't have like i'm when i played hockey if it fucking they, if they scored on me and the ref didn't see and i pulled it out before he did no goal motherfucker no, my, yeah. i'm not gonna be like oh actually they scored yeah <laughs> so if i get something passed that's kind of <laughs> that's kind of bullshit yeah I, like well because there's some that should have been passed that don't get passed and i've had that happen. that happens it, everybody it happens later in your career sure and and then you get mad and then you're like oh well i kind of squeaked one by that other time yeah yeah so, yeah um yeah being on the board was really a big deal to me and it kind of legitimized stuff with my family too yeah when they saw that happen it was like oh like you're doing it doing it like you're not you you're know, a player you know, yeah you know how they you know people will be like you do the power lifting yeah. is that with the stone like is that? that with the stones when, <laughs> and it's like yeah it's a, but when when you start saying like yeah dude like i just got put on this board that's like legendary that's like base i mean that board is like a who's who of multiply yeah, yeah. um and i didn't do it in some weirdo way where i was like there part time yep i didn't do it as like a visitor yeah you i went did all it in. i was in there i moved there i lived there i dealt with all the bullshit that comes with being a full-time <clears> member there and I took a lot of pride in that, too, because there's definitely been people who, like, oh, you're there two days a week, yeah. and Lou counts it. It's like, I don't know, man. I was there four days a week, and mm -hmm. if I missed a workout, I was getting phone calls. Yep. So, to me, I took a lot of pride in being, like, I did this full time. I went all in, and I was rewarded for that with, like, being a part of history that, like, like, again, right now, I think it's, I think Logan Zecker is up there with, like, a 1090. Mm. Um, and we trained with Logan. Like, he was in night crew for a minute, and... Like I'm that's sick because without me doing 1075, that doesn't happen. Yeah, of course. He wouldn't have gone 1090. He would have gone 10 whatever to get yeah. on the board. Sure. So, uh, yeah, I take a lot of pride in that. It was a big moment for me. You talked about family, and I think this is a good segue um, to the single ply all time record, oh, yeah. right? I yes. think talk about that because your parents came to watch uh, you. You're, you're jumping lists with heavy hitter names. Yeah. I mean, so Eddie, talk about, yeah, yeah Ed Cohen, Cohen is on that list. Hatfield, like, there's lots of guys, Thomason. Um, yeah, like, they were, like, super, they're older. Yeah. And my mom, like, they've both been sick. They, like, my dad had cancer, all that stuff. So they were really, like, 
scared of the COVID stuff. Uh, they hadn't seen me compete in years at that point, and they flew out for that meet. So um, I just posted the video the other day because yeah. uh, it was a year ago or whatever. And uh, the, I don't post the whole video because there's like this weird moment where like I step out, I look it was this way, I look this way, I look at the lights, I get it. I hug Dave. And then I turn to him and I'm like, let's go, motherfucker. Like I like yell. And then you and go then, right to your and parents. Then I see my yeah. parents and I literally, I don't, I, I put a clip, like I cut it because the transition from like rage happiness to like seeing my parents it makes me look like a psycho. Cause I'm like, yeah, motherfucker. And then I yeah, hug my, yeah, I remember hug, that. hug my mom. It's like and, the switch yeah, went back. Yeah. And, hey, mom. Uh, What's so my, up, mom? My sister called me later that day, actually. And she was like, just so you know, like mom and dad are like, they will never forget. They are like beside themselves that you took a second to like acknowledge them. And it's like right in that moment. Yo, my parents, like, obviously we had our shit. Like when I was going through my stuff with the drugs and everything, but like they have never been anything less than supportive of me. They didn't understand it, but like. They've never said, don't do that. My dad had cancer when I moved to Ohio. And when I, I called him, I was still in my suit bottoms after I did that Circumax to get invited or whatever. I called him in the parking lot. I was still smoking cigarettes at the time, like smoking a butt in, so in a good. fucking suit, straps down on the phone, just like looking like an idiot. And <laughs> <laughs> I love that you was real about that, yeah, that big like, picture of that moment. Like, like, and I called him and I was like, hey man, like we did it. Like I'm going or whatever. And he was like, I don't want you to leave, but you have to. You know what I mean? They've always yeah. been supportive. When I said, like, I'm not going to work a normal job. Like, I'm going to do this trigger warning thing. I'm going to do this thing. And, like, they were skeptical, but they were never anything less than, like, you do whatever. You, you, you know, anything you've set your mind to, you've decided that Hell you're yeah. going to do and you've done it. So, like, we support you. And uh, so having them there for that moment was fucking huge because um, they weren't able to come out to the WPO in 2020 when I placed third. And I know my mom was like upset about that because that was like a big moment for me after my coach had died and all this stuff. So when they came out for the single ply stuff, like it was cool. Like, and, and it's like not, it's just, it's cool to be able to just say, I did that. I decided I was going to do that. My parents shared that moment with me. My team shared that moment with me. My wife was there. Uh, yeah. You know, like you got a bunch of awesome fucking pictures that Oh, that's day. right. Trey covered it. Yeah. He got like great Fuck fucking yeah. video, bunch of pictures and like, that moment is, I don't want to say it was a turning point for me, but it was another notch that I could say, like, give me something else that I say yeah. I'm going to fucking do. I'll yeah. do it right now, Yeah, you showed now, up and you fucking did it. Yeah. So what was the number? 1036.2, and I weighed, like, 258. Fuck yeah. So it was, uh, I beat Henry Thomason with that one, um, who's, like, a legend. First guy Easily. to try to squat 1,300. Um yeah, and so that was a that was a really big. I fucked myself up. I hurt my shoulder, my forearm. I couldn't bench an empty bar. Remember, I came here. I yeah. had to do the reverse. Grip. Yeah, mm -hmm. my shit was all fucked up. But like to me, <clears throat> totally worth it. Oh yeah, you know, and and <clears throat> like I plan on pushing that number more yeah. in the future. I just got some stuff I got to do. Multiply first. Yeah, yeah. So uh, everyone usually that comes out of West Side, it's it's funny because they eerily can remember variations numbers things they've seen right it's just part of it right and i i feel i'm the same way things i saw there it's like whether it's yours or something you saw dave do jason any of these guys what are some of the things you saw from a bench squat deadlift that you went oh fuck, like fuck me whole, yeah yeah, yeah cuz everyone has those moments when they go through those doors they're like can't believe i saw that today so i've seen <laughs> some shit in that building i know um i saw dave do a 565 floor press for two that was insane yeah yeah uh i saw one day we were doing, raw obviously yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah i saw that i mean i've side spotted him for like 11 21 boards and stuff like that which is, what what happens when 11 20 goes sideways well dude like you can't. I've talked about this with training partners before. Yeah. You have to be willing to you have to be willing to get an annoying injury to save your buddy from getting fucking maimed. Die. die. Because, yeah, cuz it's like I have to be willing to potentially blow my bicep off to make sure you still have your head attached to your yeah, body. Yeah. Facts. Um and it's like the same thing with a squat. Like you have yeah. to be willing to like maybe get hurt to make sure that they don't get like life-changingly injured. Yeah. And that is like a big thing with like the training like the training group and knowing that you can trust these people that they're yeah. willing to like because there were certain people at Westside that I wouldn't spot because I'm like, that motherfucker's reckless. 
I am not going to blow my bicep off because you're a fucking idiot. Yeah, yeah, Like, yeah. I'm just not going to do it. You just knew it, yeah. So, uh, as far as, like, big lifts, I saw uh, <laughs> one day we were doing uh, safety squat bar, the one with no handles there, the, the yeah, fucking terrible. neck breaker, uh, blue-green-purple band okay. on it, and Tony Baloney shows up. And Tony's like, you know, Chuck's cousin really or whatever. Strong. And, like they say he's like the stupidest, strongest dude. Like totally like twenty eight hundred or he'd, something. He'd pick up like eleven fifty and like look at Lou and then like squat. Like I was never there for that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like <laughs> I wanna really be I wanna strong. be really clear like what I was there for or what I yeah. wasn't. I was not there for that, but I always heard that. So he shows up and he's like, Oh, I think I'm gonna squat with you guys. I haven't squatted in like six months. Da, da, da. And I look at uh Christian Mello and I was just like I'm about to beat Tony Baloney. Watch this motherfucker. I'm about to beat this dude. And the dude, like, I squatted 475 plus those bands on that bar. He did like 650 <laughs> in like in like a pair of briefs that he like just pulled on. Yeah, that probably like, weren't even tight. Fuck, dude. Yeah. Like, uh, that was crazy. Uh, I know I saw like, you know, as far as bench stuff is concerned, you know, I saw Dave do. Uh, like five plates and change to a two board against double purples raw. Oof. Those bands are no ho. No, like, those are severe. No. no, me and Cole got a little bit of that on the no Sunday ho. crew a couple times. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah that's whenever Treadway missed the bar. Yeah, yeah. right. You missed yeah. the bar on that. Yeah, yeah, Damn. yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm just running. <laughs> <laughs> he said he's just running. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah I mean, I, saw, I watched. Uh, he has no comment. <laughs> I watched Dave do a thousand. So this was after he left. Was like this that. Uh, at Doghouse, but he did uh, 1,005 plus 200 and chained in a Cambridge bar for two to a box. Just briefs. That was fucking insane. I remember being like, what the fuck? <laughs> um, dude, probably one of the most insane looking things I saw that was like, I am in fucking outer space right now, was we were pulling up for that push-pull, actually. We were pulling up, and this dude, they used to call him Wolverine. He was like a small fighter there. I forget his last name. But we pull up, and he's... Got a Bluetooth in his ear. He's talking to someone on the phone. Okay. He's got the wheelbarrow, right? And then, he, so that's stacked up with what, however many plates on it. He's walking and he's got the head harness with a band down to the front of the wheelbarrow. He's walking and doing next stuff at the same time. <laughs> talking on the phone. He's like, yeah, so fucking anyway. <laughs> and I was just Fuck. like, where the fuck is <laughs> This is insanity. Yeah, um, yeah. Oh, dude. This is, so this was probably, this is probably the, one of the craziest things I saw, they were doing uh, out of chains, like a good morning out of chains, and it was two monsters down and purples kind of forward. Okay. And Jake Anderson, it was like, it was Jake Anderson, Chuck, I think Luke was probably in the mix yeah. there. That kind of like crew. Um, and they're going whatever, they're doing like triples. Jake missed, I think it was like four plates or four and a half plates. He missed the second rep. Okay. And puts it down, and they're busting his fucking balls. Like, just like, oh, yeah, nice one, buddy. Like, whatever. And Jake's, like, real quiet. Yeah. He's, like, a real religious guy. You know, he's, like, pretty put together. And then I see him walk back under. He did it for, like, it was either five or six after that. After he missed and the I was second just one. Like, I was like, oh, someone's going to die. Like, <laughs> yeah. Oh, holy shit. So he did it and then immediately walked right to the bathroom and puked. And I was like, it's different here. It is different. It, and that was Jesus. pretty early on when I was like, oh, okay, like – this is a different thing mm -hmm. than I'm used to. Um, and I'm sure we like other stuff that I saw there, like training with Dave, it's hard to look back and cause everything he does is nuts. crazy. Yeah. You know, I've, I've seen that dude dump 12 something off his back, take his knee wraps off, re knee wrap and fucking smoke it. Like, you know, and it's like, what's his mentality? Why is he so different? Anthony, dude, Dave's a, Dave's an awesome guy, but he's a weird cat. You know? Yeah, yeah. He just he he aren't we he all just a little bit weird though? <laughs> he beats to the he beats to the the time and the sound of a different like his own drummer. Like he, yeah, he yeah. just is who he is. I think uh, probably one of the most like monumental things he said to me. I was warming up at the meet that I squatted ten seventy five. That was my first APF meet. The judging was going to be tight. They actually did, like the judges had uniforms on, and I was like, this is like mm. way more legit than meets I've done yeah. in the past. I'm looking around like holy shit. And I took like a warm up in the back and I looked at Val and I was like, that moved good. Like, did that move? And he goes, doesn't matter how it moved. Weight is weight. Just squat it. And it's like, and that's why you're the best. Yeah. Yeah. That is why you are the fucking best. And like, like he's not concerned whether it moved well or not. He's like, how, who gives a fuck? He's like, everything's going to feel like shit. Everything's going to feel heavy. Just fucking squat it for him. He always just says form and technique. Yeah. 
Um, another big thing he taught me too, like that he's okay with is the, what goes up must come down. So when I would be in there fucking tripping because I missed a 450 <clears throat> double on floor press, he's like, bro, like we're fucking 16 weeks out from me. What the fuck do you care? Like what goes up must come down. You cannot always be jacked and strong. Yeah. Like you have to like, there's going to be times there's cycles of it where it comes down. He's like, you're going to have good sessions, bad sessions. You're going to have good years and bad years. Yeah. That's so, fucking truth. you know, and when you really get to know Dave, you notice that like, he's just, he's just lifting weights. Like that post that Michael made the other day from the West Side, mm -hmm. he's like, what, what does he say? Like, um, he's just started taking what was there. Yeah. On that day, instead of trying to break records, he just went to what was there on that day. And that's something that I've really learned. That's interesting. To. Yeah. And you do, if you do it in training, it, it's the same thing. Like if you had asked me, I PR that bench the other day, uh, you know, out here, it's like, I got my bench shirt last week. My neck is fucked up from this fucking injury that I had, whatever. Mm -hmm. I didn't, I thought I was going to take like six thirty off of a fucking two board. Hmm. And I end up taking 715 off of one board because he's like, nope, make another jump. And I'm like, yeah, it feels all right. I guess we'll just keep going. And I was like, holy shit, I just PR'd. And it wasn't terribly hard, and I didn't get terribly up for it. And I just drove 13 hours the night before. like, But I just took, took what, was what was there. there. And that's a really important lesson for people. But you have to be really honest with yourself. Hmm. It's not what you want. Yeah. It's what you get. <laughs> yeah. It's different. That and, is different. And, he, he, he said to, I heard him one time, he said to, uh, to Snooky, he goes, we're not planning your fucking, he had had a bunch of bad meets. He's like, we're not planning your second attempts. What we're going to do is we're going to go to the meet. If you get your last warm up and it looks good, you get to take your opener on the platform. If you get that, then we'll make a decision from there. Yeah. If you get that, then you get to take a third one. Yeah. Yeah. And then if you get your first bench. That you get to pick a fucking second one. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, that's such a, that should be everybody's outlook no on question. a meet. You know what I'm saying? Not like, these are the things that I'm doing. And But, and then to just totally be a <laughs> contrarian, also, sometimes you have to just decide what you're fucking doing. Yeah. I, I think that the nuance in, in lifting and in business and all of that is like knowing when to pull the fucking trigger yeah. and when not to. Mm -hmm. And it's very difficult, especially like I'm mm -hmm. sure for you, like, with like how long you've been doing this, the injury, like, am I being a pussy? Yeah. Or not? Because mm -hmm. there's times where you're like, is it worth it? Mm -hmm. it's right. Very now important to, distinction. Yeah. It it's, is. It's yeah. it's hard. You know, like, in your heart of hearts, you know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You in your heart of hearts, you know, like, am I being a bitch right now, or am yeah. I not? Like, it's like last Sunday we moved the whole fucking gym on Saturday. In, like I, we moved 2,100 square feet of fucking rubber flooring. Like, yeah. yeah. And then and my training partner was like, what are we doing for bench on Sunday? I'm like, fucking, I, I'm not doing anything. Nothing. Yeah. <laughs> I'm pushing around this model. That's strategy, like, bro. I'm not yeah. fucking doing this for what reason? Yeah. You know what I mean? And so that's something I learned from him where it's like, you don't get strong in one day. No, you don't get strong in nice. one week. So why would you get weak in one week? <laughs> yeah. That's not how it fucking works. Yeah. Like a, like an object in motion stays in motion. And I get that. And like, you know, doing the lunges and stuff keeps me healthy and keeps me moving. Yep. But like, I don't know. I haven't deadlifted in three weeks just because of my schedule. I bet you I could walk out there and pull fucking 720 right now. Yeah, I believe you. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> yeah. Because the, it doesn't just go away. No. You just have to like continue showing up and doing what you can on that day. And eventually it kind of, you know, like what's that stupid meme that's like, People think success looks like this, oh, yeah, it goes like but it's this. actually like fucking. Yeah, all I can over confirm the place. that. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like it's like a squiggle chart. When yeah. you're when yeah. you're down, it's like you never think. It's like some movie says. It's like when you're down, you never think you're gonna be up uh, again. Yeah. yeah. You know Blow. what I mean? Yeah. And when you're Jump up, down. you never think. <laughs> I know that one. Yeah, That's you never think you're gonna quote. be down again or whatever. And yeah. it's like it's the truth, man. I mean, like I'm just I tore my pec in uh, December or January, or whatever it was. And like, I'm just getting around to where, like I said to my training partner the other day, I was like, I think I could probably start swinging at floor press PRs. Like I might yeah. be able to do 500 right now, like get within a jump of my best Did 455 for two. And I'm just like, and it's taken this long to get there. You know what I mean? Like it just takes all this shit takes time and you just have to be like, okay, I'm not at my best right now, but I will be. Yeah. You know, De Niro said something like, uh, don't over hype yourself when shit's going good. Cause there's a runtime to that. 
mm-hmm. and don't get overly too down in the, in the dumps when it's not going good because there's a run time to that. So they both end. Yeah, yeah it, it's, the same, you, yeah, it's it, the same thing as reading comments. Like I, I yeah. was watching, uh, Brian Callen said something about this the other day. It's just like, don't read comments because it'll be 20 fucking positive ones. It'll be one negative one. You'll yeah. focus on the negative one, right? So there's that yeah. that happens, and that's a thing. But also, you'll think about the 20 comments when you're making content going forward, and you'll be trying to please people instead of being authentic with yeah. what you're doing. Mm. I could see that. So it's the same idea, right? Where it's like, I'm just am who I am. My lifts are just what theirs, and I'm just going to keep showing up. Yeah. So I can't get too up or too down, and that's mm-hmm. very difficult with who we are as people. For sure. Because yeah, yeah. when I'm up, I want to be like, I'm oh, fucking yeah. King Kong in this yeah, motherfucker. <laughs> Facts, I feel that. Danny. Um. Yeah, I was like kind of – I mean, you mentioned like guys that you saw lift crazy weights, but like, what is like the one? Is it the squat that really sticks out to you um, as like your like, or like what was like one lift that really sticks out to you in your career? Uh, or, for me, mm-hmm. or that I witnessed. For you. For me, yeah, yeah I would say probably um, the ten seventy five that I did. No, you know what? I think a turning point for me was I I squatted. 905 to a box with a cambered bar um and i had had that injury going on i i didn't squat for i didn't squat for 10 weeks or eight weeks all i did was drag a sled and do accessories um, shout out to that people or, need to hear that or or uh, or like you're doing I do, something i would do narrow deadlifts and stuff i couldn't go out wide and i was doing pt and we had like this date she's like you're squatting in eight weeks and we're gonna get you ready to do that and my best was like 855 with that bar. And I was like, I'm fucking squatting 905 on this bitch. And it was like one of the most technical box squats I've ever fucking had. And it was like, you know, I think I posted it to like Q, the boys are back in town. Yeah. yeah, <laughs> Cause like, yeah. I felt like, like I got, it was like, I got re excited about training again. And it, I, I realized that I wasn't made of glass and I could come back from these injuries. I could yeah. do stuff. And that was kind of a turning point for me to like show me like, Yo, you're a tough motherfucker. Like you can get through this. And, like you don't have. To, sometimes like science isn't the answer. Sometimes you just have to nut the fuck up. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I think that that was because that was the training cycle leading up to the 1075 at 242. Yeah. So that was probably my one of my big big moments. Um, either that or I would say the one that like would get me the most teary eyed would be I bench 628 at WPO. It took three times to get it. Um, and I was, I had, uh, my coach had died and I, I started hashtagging for Fru. His last name was Fru. And I had missed two benches and I'm standing there and I'm like, you know, like, oh, maybe I could sneak in a meet somewhere in here. I was already thinking that. Mm-hmm. Thinking that the third miss is coming. Yeah. And DB, like one of my, one of my best training partners, not a great lifter. One of the best training partners I ever had from behind me just goes, this one's for Fru. And I was just like, fucking <sighs> let's get it, you know? Yeah. And I, dude, like, I'll never forget it. It was in like kind of a warehouse type of gym. Like I'm bringing the bar down. I was walking up to the bar. I was like, you get this or you break your fucking arm trying. Like you are getting this fucking lift right now. And I bring it out and I bring it down, bring it down, bring it down. And they had been yelling at me to keep my head down. Cause I was lifting my head and I was dumping it forward. Yeah. So I'm keeping my head down, going, going, going. And I, I look up and I see the ceiling and as I'm bringing it down, I had the thought like, there's probably tons of dust up there. <laughs> <laughs> and, then I, and then I get a press and my like, bah, comes up and I'm like, yeah, motherfucker. Like, and I, <laughs> I, uh, yeah, I ended up coming in third and got a WPO medal at that. Meet. So that actually, that's probably the lift that's that like, yeah. meant the most to me because I knew if I got that, I was getting through the meet. I knew I was going to pull yeah. it. And then we kind of like played games with coefficient on my deadlift. I only pulled, I only put like, like seven fifty five or something, and then uh, that got me the the top three placement. But that bench was a uh, was a big one for me. They called me like on the broadcast. They called me the comeback kid. Yeah, it's awesome. It's, it's like really cool footage. I stand up and oh my rah! Like I had a <laughs> mullet at the time, so I looked like a maniac. <laughs> so good, cool. Uh, yeah, let's get into the specifics of like some good solid like training accessories like for improving your squat bench and deadlift because you put out the bench boaters you got some fire fucking supersets and shit like mm-hmm. that what what's your favorite go-to for like me mine's favorite like skull crushers and shrugs superset and that yeah what's that for each lift for you uh so for 
for squat, I honestly think that flipping and figuring out how to train my quads has been big for me. Um, I know that like, that's kind of the opposite of what a lot of the West side stuff says, but training my quads has made a big difference. So like sissy squats, I mm-hmm. really like, um, really stretched out, um, split squats where I'm like really stretching my back hip yeah, flexor, exactly. squeezing yeah. that glute. Um, those are really good for my squat development. We started doing like raw pulse squats after. Okay. So put them, you know, like just putting a bunch of blood in them. You know what a Mars bar is? Mm-mm. It's like basically like a safety squat bar that kind of wraps around your back. Oh, so no, really yeah, yeah. yeah. So we would go like start at the top, squat to the bottom, come halfway up, come back to the bottom, and oh, stand yeah. all the way up. Serrano shit. For yeah, like it's heavy, like a quarter rep squat. Yeah, yeah I got gotcha. Heavy sets of eight. And I feel like that's made me more durable, more resistant to injury. Um, plus, like, Adding raw squatting as an accessory to, uh, you know, multi squatting is interesting. You got to be careful where you yeah, put it. Yeah, yeah. I like it, though. We just go, fuck like, with three it. sets. So I just go, like, plate, plate, plate. Yeah, yeah. I fuck and with it. And the third set is a bitch. Yeah. Um, for benching, I've started – I really like doing dips recently. Most guys that are great benchers are really good at dips. I do. I, I, for whatever I would say reason, that's pretty standard. Yeah, for whatever reason, I'm pretty good at them, and I like them a lot. Um, those and, like, we started doing, like, a tri. We do, like, a tricep movement, whatever it is, like some sort of push down, and then I'll take micro minis, and I hook them to our prowler because it's low, mm-hmm. and I do, like, reverse, like, pinkies high, reverse flies. So you get, like, an isometric on your tricep. Yeah. And you get rear delt out of it. So those two together, I really liked. And then for deadlift, it's always the same old shit, man. Like stiff leg RDL type stuff. Um, and good mornings that you don't go very far with. Mm. So a big thing with good mornings with me that I, that I noticed for myself and a lot of my lifters is like, you can get really strong at good mornings. But if you do it in a fucked up mo- movement pattern, it doesn't matter. So like okay. if you're doing like, now if you deadlift conventional like KK with a rounded back, yeah. then sure, load up your good mornings and round your back. For me, and for most people, I think you want to have like a more neutral back, whatever. So I'll do good mornings. I'll only push them as heavy as I can do, and I'll only push back as far as I can do without rounding my back. Got it. If I want to do rounded back like flexion work, I'll just do like seated good mornings with a med ball, and I'll round my back intentionally and then arch yeah. out of it. But if I'm doing like heavy good mornings, it might only be – 40% of the range of motion, but mm-hmm. I'm loading my glutes, my low back and my hamstring and then standing up. And I think that that has helped have a carryover to like breaking at the hips of my squat. Like yeah. when I first got to Westside, I could only, I could only do two plates for a good morning for a set of three. Louis wow. laughed at me. He was yeah. like, you're remarkably weak for how big your squat is. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, Tim okay. Harold, when like, I did 185 the first time and he did 700 and he said, yeah, that's really fucking bad, and your abs look good, but they're fucking weak, too. Yeah. <laughs> like, fuck, yeah. yeah. So, so by the time I left there, I did five plates quarter on a camera bar for three. Yeah, it's Good sick. mornings, but they looked like shit, but I, did, like, I got much stronger that way. Uh, so really strong arch back good mornings for deadlift, I think, have had a great carryover for me. And, dude, like, not to kiss everyone's ass in here, but, like, the lunges, I think, have They've made helped. a big fucking difference for me. They allow me to train harder now because I'm not as brittle. Yeah. Like literally. You just, you just the, the added, because you've always done sled stuff. Yeah. That was just an added GPP that really wasn't in the sphere of how a lot of multi five guys train. Lunges, dude. Yeah. Like, well, because people do like, oh, I'll do three sets of 12 or maybe split squats. There's a lot of guys that do those. Yeah. But doing them like in the same manner as you guys do sled work or wheelbarrow, car- wheelbarrow carries, it just wasn't. You know, that, and that's interesting that you did, hey, 100. That's how you – it's not 400, 800. No. Like, we're pushing because I'm also trying to keep my body weight low with them too, which I guess yeah. to some degree you you felt your metabolic rate come up too. Yeah, I've been able to eat a little bit more. I've yeah. stayed leaner. I And also, like, if I – because of only doing 100 and, and, and that way, like, if I was like, okay, it's time to go to 242. Yep. I would just do 200 lunges exactly. instead of 100. And, and, and it's like one of those things where it's like, I don't want to pull all my cards at once. Yep. So when it's time to do that, because eventually it will be time to not, to be closer to 200 pounds than 300 pounds. Of course. I'll just add in an extra set of 100 lunges yeah. and keep everything else the same. It works like that too. And it'll just. Isn't that crazy? Once yeah. people understand that, it's, it's, it's like wild. It's like if you pull all your carbs out of your fucking food 
and you lose 30 pounds, but you're trying to lose 50, what do you do after that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Stop eating. Yeah. Like, yeah. You, you know what I mean? You can't pull it all at once. Yeah. So. No kidding. Trayvon, your turn, buddy. Um, so kind of go off Cole's question. Like, what are some of, I'm kind of curious, like, what are like exercises that you don't like then? <laughs> That's uh, a great question. Yeah. The antagonist. Mm-hmm. So I won't do any more. I won't do like the safety squat low box stuff. Shit's anymore. hard on you. I just, I mean, I did like 625 to a fucking like 11 inch box narrow Ooh. with a cambered bar. Like, I don't, I just don't need to do it. I like, I don't like the risk for the risk reward. reward. It's just not like worth it. it. It's like, it's a dick swing. Yeah. And like, <laughs> at, and like and where, Hashtag dick swing. Where, 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 where I'm at in my career, like, I don't give a fuck when yeah. I squat raw. It doesn't yeah. matter doesn't to matter. me. So, like, that was always kind of like one of those movements that we would throw in over there, like, to be like fuck you like we're strong raw and like i don't care yeah like so i don't do that that's anymore. not your game no I, and uh so that's one and i don't really do reverse hypers in the same way that i used to um how I do just you do, do them? them like real loose i don't do them really heavy i've just like done enough of i just yeah. like to me i'm like I fucking so blood pump this. work at yeah, this point at with the them. end of my workout and i i superset those with face pulls and abs so a rule in my in my lifting crew Every rep of reverse hyper is a rep of face pull. Every rep of face pull is a rep of abs. So if we do, and we do it in like a circuit. So yeah. it's like, I like that. 25 reverse hypers, 25 face pulls, 25 abs. All right. And so that way you're just getting, it's like, it's at the end of a workout. We're bullshitting about what we're going to do yeah. after doing face pulls, doing whatever. But that extra little bit of volume in my upper back, like helps my shoulders stay healthy. And like, I'm not going to do what y'all do for abs like i'm not gonna come in here and do abs for fucking 45 minutes. it's not fucking happening i yeah. know who i am and that's <laughs> not gonna do it so this way it's i've created sort of like an ocd type thing where it's yeah. like no dude like you did three sets of 25 here you're doing three sets of 25 yeah, crunches it keeps it balanced whatever out. and uh i felt i think that that's helped my low back but uh, uh, my stability rather um but i fucking hate reverse hypers bro i hate them you I know i i want to like them but it never it, I think it's because I have the QL SI yeah the, unless I feel really good I don't feel better when I do them yeah and I think it might be just because now before I had that issue I did them way more often I did them super heavy when I went and all that but like once I ha- got injured in that specific spot it it just fucking aggravates the it's shit out the, and I hate it because I yeah. want to get the benefit from it but it's like it would make me worse so I was like it's not the cure all no, it's not the cure all. It's not the cure all, and uh, but I think it's another one of those things where it's like you don't get to like with reverse hypers, you don't get to say you don't like doing them and you're not going to do them yeah. until you've done so many of them that I believe you're actually sick of them. Yeah, you, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. It's like it's been, you've been powerlifting for three years and you're sick of reverse hypers. It's like, well, I guess you're sick of lifting big weights then. Yeah. I don't know if they felt good, I literally would do them every fucking day. Right. Because yeah. I felt the benefit when they did feel good. And, and I've been in that too. Yeah. Where every fucking day I was walk doing in like, fucking rock, bro. Yeah. And and now I've kind of gotten away from that, and I feel a little better. But I think that's just again because I've just got a lot of miles. Yeah. And I've done a lot to my like I've done my career has been very dense. I think my first meet was in 2014. Mm-hmm. So I haven't even been powerlifting for 10 years. But within those 10 years, That's I've wild. been at the highest level yeah. that you can be at. And so I've taken a real strong beating because of that. Yeah. And there's certain stuff that I just pull out because I'm like, I don't, like straight bar overhead press, you can miss me with that. It ain't, <laughs> it ain't fun. When ain't I, catch me outside on that one. When I tore my pack, it was the only thing that I could do. Yeah. And I was, I fucking hated my life on Wednesdays. It was fucking thing because i'm not good at it. it hurts my shoulder and so that's another one that i don't really fuck with i'll do like dumbbells yeah or uh you know what's an awesome one is bow bar overhead press okay never done that yeah so because you might have to be careful with yeah, it yeah, at yeah. first but when you press overhead with it because of the angle you can like squeeze your upper back interesting and then when you bring it down it gives you like your triceps kind of hit your lats yeah yeah, yeah. so it kind of takes the bottom pressure off of your shoulders and then you kind of like can squeeze your upper back to get it going so you're getting a lot of delt work from it Mm. without the crazy stress in the bottom Mm, i fuck with that and i really i really like it i don't know like the the real value in it other than like it doesn't hurt then there's value there. <laughs> no, that's cool. Um, anything else you want to share with the listeners, Anthony, about um, 
I don't know, just kind of like parting shots on training and competing or anything like that. Yeah. So like, um, I know you asked me earlier, like if I'd talk about Lou passing yeah, and all please. that stuff. So like, um, for me, I never made like a post on social media about it. And I felt I actually got some like weirdo fucking messages from people. I don't know. So like no post about Lou. And it's like, I don't even know who the fuck you are. <laughs> yeah. Uh, how I, you know, kind of process death is none of your fucking business. Facts. Um, it was a very weird situation for me because me and Lou like had a really tumultuous relationship. Like he never really treated me super well. Um, and that's fine. Like that's who he was as a person. Like, and I, the, the thing I can say about Lou is that he is, he was who he was and if for better or worse, I can respect that. Yeah. We didn't see eye to eye on a lot of stuff. Um, and so when he passed, it was one of those weird things where like, when I first got the news, I was like, eh, anyway, and just like kind of carried on with my day. And then, you know, you start thinking about it and it's like, okay, without this guy, what doesn't happen? <laughs> I'm not here right now. It's a lot. Yeah. I'm, you know, and, and you can like really butterfly affect that shit. Like no question. It, but like, if you think about like my three foot circle, what changes, right? It's like, well, I wouldn't have met my wife. You know what I mean? Like if I didn't have a relationship with this guy, wouldn't have met my wife because I wouldn't have been working at that gym because I wouldn't have even yeah. known what fucking multiply powerlifting is. When it comes to the direct relationship with him, you know, like he got every ounce out of me that he could. Now, because of his personality type, he didn't really know how to get more from me than that. Yeah. And he got... 2360 out of me yeah and that was every fucking pound that he could get out of me dave added 150 pounds to that because dave's style was different his personality type allowed him to kind of let me back off a little bit and figure certain things out but he had an ego in like a different way louis just was like couldn't figure me out with some stuff and just said you're never going to total more than 2350 <laughs> and it's like say it again yeah yeah, yeah of course <laughs> so I, I i had a lot of resentment towards him and how things ended there and and all that stuff uh, which will like i can't really get into the super details of that because it'll yeah. come out in the documentary that michael's doing all that sure. stuff but uh as far as the death stuff is just wild to me because um i felt like pressured to make like some post on social media about it i haven't talked about this like at all at all right yeah. so people are kind of really seeing what's going on with this but um I felt pressured to make uh, like you're like, I'm the type of dude that if you tell me to have a good day, I'm going to have a bad day on purpose. You don't fucking tell me what to do. <laughs> and so as soon as I felt like pressured to make a post about this, I was like, fuck that. I, you, I, you will not see me make a post about this. It's nobody's business. I will talk to my friends who actually know how things went there. Yeah. Talk to you about it. Talk to Dave about it. Like we like, you know, last time I saw that dude, like, was not a good interaction sure uh and so i mean my last positive interaction with lou was probably a year and a half before i left the gym got it so it's a little weird you never want somebody to pass you never want you never wish death on anybody at first i thought it wouldn't bother me but then like there were a couple posts that i saw that like you know it affected me in a way where it was like this dude helped me move my career along so much uh and you know it's a fucking shame like someone uh that was that influential in the sport you know when we lose somebody like that the shit that i had a problem with with the death thing was just like people fronting on the internet like they actually fucking knew him yeah that sort of stuff where it's like that pissed me off because you i did actually know him. you know what i mean and i yeah. did actually like eat breakfast with him every morning for for a chunk of time I did have arguments with him. We did scream at each other. He has hugged me after I've had big lifts. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like he, he was always respectful of my wife. Like there were things that were very positive and things that were very negative. Um, so the, the death of him was a weird thing to deal with. I think a lot of guys felt that way. Anthony. Yeah. I don't think it was just you. I think there's a lot of guys that, you know, basically for lack of it, like head over heels for Lou, no matter what. Yeah. But there's a lot of guys that felt like that. But then also the butterfly effect, I think is a really, well said thing because even with me never being full time, never being there for huge chunks of time, but just always kind of being around for eight or ten years. Yeah, the effects of me as a as a person being able to program, 
understanding the limits, what was possible, the amount of relationships I created with all these great lifters that taught me so many things. Like, yeah, bro, I am not near as good at pro, not even in the fucking ballpark or the intensity, which I came by intense, like naturally. Mm -hmm. But then when I felt what it really was supposed to feel like, sure. Addicted to it. Yeah. I couldn't get enough. I didn't care that Gritter was fucking screaming at me. I fucking was like, this is what I need in my life. Yeah, yeah. And now how can I get this out of other people? Right. Right. And so he showed the blueprint. Yeah. What the fuck you think I got going on here? Right. So I look up to Arnold, but the reality is I want to be like him. Yeah. You know what I mean? And so it's like, I don't think I ever said that to him, but I tried to do it by showing yeah. what I was creating. Right. And you know, yeah, I tried to get Louie to come here a couple different times and I called Tommy and Tommy said, he said, no detours. So he's like, yo, I ain't yeah. coming. It, but that's Louie, though. That's who it I is. didn't. I couldn't get butthurt of that. I wanted him. He came to the old gym multiple times. He helped me on my first 700-pound squat. He side-spotted it. But, you know, I tried to get him to come here probably about, it was about two months before he died. Yeah. And I was like, heard he was on, I heard there was a Louie sighting on the east side. Yeah, yeah. And I tried to get him, but it just wasn't happening. It didn't fucking matter who was here. Yeah. And so that, but that's part, you're not going to get, you just get what you get, dude. He's, you gotta, you got to respect that he is... A hundred percent down for it. I'm going down with the whale. Yes. Like he's, and, and he just is, he, he was who he was. Um, the legacy of Lou will like live on forever. West side barbell. I don't think, you know, like it, it, it it's, <laughs> it can't go up yeah. from where it is now. No. It, it cannot, it will not. Um, and what he created, I feel really fortunate that I got a chance to get in there and experience the things that I experienced and have the, um, you know, for better or for worse, man, like experienced Lou in his true form where it was like, you know, like I'm happy that I had a fucking screaming match with Lou. Not many people can say that. Yeah. Not many people can say that, like screaming at each other, thought I was going to get a fucking bloody nose, like, like screaming at each other. And I puked after actually, um, I was just like fucking wound up and you know, like I'm happy that I got that experience and I'm happy that there were certain days where he was just like shitty to me and gave me a reason to perform. You know, I was at um, yep. nationals in 2018. I had th that crazy injury. Like, you know, my wife's helping me put my underwear on. Like I can't bend over and I'm fucking opening with a thousand fucking 40 squat. <laughs> and uh, I saw him in the warm up room and I was still training there. And I yeah. was like, what's up, Lou? How you doing? And he just goes, eh. wouldn't talk to me. Was just Jeez. mad about some other shit. Right. And, um, and that's just who he was. And that's what, like the negative things are why the gym was the way that it was. Yeah. And you can't get one without the other. If he had walked up to me and said, what's up, Anthony, how you doing, man? How's your groin? Are you feeling okay? Do you need to yeah. <laughs> like th that gym does not exist with that. So yeah. you have to take the good with the bad. And it was, uh, yeah. So him passing was a difficult thing for me, but I think that, uh, like he died how he wanted to his own terms. Yep. You know what I'm saying? That's like something that you could say about it. Like he, he went out the way that he wanted to, he never compromised for a motherfucker. And, and, and dude, like that's to me, that's fucking sick. Hell yeah. Like, you know, it's not the happiest existence to have, yeah. I don't think. But, uh, I think that like he, when he died, I think Kellen said this to me, like, like he died his way. Yeah. And he doesn't want anyone like all of the like heartfelt posts and all that. So like, he would hate that shit. Yeah. He would fucking hate it. And, and like, you know, I, I, just the way that he operated on a daily basis, I think it was, um, I'm just very grateful that I got to be a, PR, yeah. a part of that. And like, for whatever reason, my life led me there and it changed my fucking life. Well, and the indifference is to your point is part of why it's great. So it's like, yes. you're okay. It's okay that you don't have to feel, like you want to draw a big heart around his name. Right. You know what I mean? like, yeah. Well, that's part of the reason. I mean, like, like a real quick story just to put it where fucking where me and Lou were at was I was like, he was obsessed with fucking deficit deadlifts. And I'm like, I just don't think that they work for me. And it's too much. Like, I'm like, I, you know, he's like, what are you doing today? I'm like, I'm doing rack pull. Like, literally the opposite of what he wanted me to do. He's like, <laughs> he's like, you should do a four inch deficit. And I was like, what am I going to do? Fucking four inch deficit, pull 600 and call it a fucking day pass. And he just goes, you're not pulling 600 off a four inch deficit. And I was like, 
Okay. That's his coaching bell <laughs> right there. Okay. So I fucking pull six. I, I pulled I pulled 605 just as like a fuck. Yeah, dude. yeah, of course. I pull the 605, throw it down, and I look at him like, yeah, motherfucker. And he just starts laughing. And I'm like, he got, he me. got you to do what he wanted <laughs> you to <laughs> do. Got me. And it's like, you want to kill the guy. You yeah. know what I mean? And that was just one of the many times where like, yeah. one time he let me think that he was talking shit about me when he was not. Yeah. Like I, I, I came out from. I had missed my alarm, this big, long story. Anyway, I missed, I got to Circumax day. They already had all the bands on the bar mm-hmm. and I had, my phone had shut off in the middle. It was like a shit show. So I show up, I missed my PR and I'm like standing there and I hear me. And I thought I heard him say my name and I'm like, what the fuck are you? I was like, I haven't missed a squat in fucking six months. You're going to talk. Give me that again. So I took it again and I got, he said nothing. He just looking at me going like, you know, <laughs> so, so I, <laughs> So good. I take it and I get it and I'm like, yeah, motherfucker. I don't need no breakfast. I don't need no <laughs> breakfast. <laughs> Fuck you. Like screaming and yelling, throw my belt or whatever. And then the dude he was standing next to comes over to me. He's like, you know, he didn't say a fucking word about you. <laughs> Just so you know, like he let you think that shit. Cause he thought you would go again if he did. So he like, wasn't even doing the thing. <laughs> and picked up on me that I was affected by you it. You needed it, like, it, though. Yeah, and like I mean, it made me take that again and get it, and and like it, you know, that training cycle ended up being pretty good. There's a gang of guys that have those same stories, yeah. type of stories. It's all this, dude. It's, it's like we've had all a very similar experience. Yeah, there's like these little nuanced things that probably just change how people feel about it now. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean. Well, thanks for sharing that, especially because you really haven't. Yeah, of and course. I think, and and to your point with the the post, that's why I took that camera bar seven hundred because I remember when I made seven hundred, he like I went out to lunch with him and he said, Corey, I know you're not going to be like us, like yeah, but that's you can't accidentally do this. I yeah. know that you want that. You know what I mean? He mm-hmm. knew it was important to me, and I love lifting. And so whenever I took seven hundred on that camera bar and I paused it, and I was fucking, I was so hyped that fucking morning because I was like. He ain't going to want me to write some fucking book about how no. I looked up to him. No. He wants that. Yes. And that's that's, that's like, uh, yeah, that's sort of like the beauty of the whole thing, right? It's like um, his passing kind of showed me what that experience meant to me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because at first I was like, I don't give a fuck. Like, whatever, dude. And then it hits you and you're like, no, wait, hold on a second. I do give a fuck. I do give a fuck. And... Uh, this person was monumental in shaping my life, my career, my yep. relationships, my my place within this space of lifting yeah. was really shaped by like me being a part of that gym. Sure. And that doesn't happen if he didn't give me a fucking chance. Some fucking kid that he didn't know. Yeah. And, you know, like people can say like, well, he'd give anyone a chance. He didn't give a fuck like he was. But it wasn't anybody. It was no. me. And I experienced that. And yeah. so, like, it was a very, <laughs> obviously, as you can tell by the way I'm talking about, like, it's still conflicting for me. Yeah, yeah. You know, and, and, and how I feel That's about okay, it. by the way. Yeah, Anthony. it's just, like, how I process the whole thing. And, like, I still think about, I still shy away from making posts, like we were talking about before, where it might seem disrespectful to him. Yeah. Like, I still shy away from doing stuff that's, like, contrarian with trigger warning against, like, the West Side stuff as like a respect, respect to that guy who's not here anymore. And it's like for now, like eventually I won't feel that way, but now yeah. it's how I do. So like, I'm going to keep it, you know, a hundred with like, I'm not going to post shit that I feel like might be misconstrued as disrespectful to him just out of like, because of what he did for the sport yeah, and yeah. multiply, like lived and died by multiply dude. When oh yeah. Every, literally when everyone was fucking saying fuck multiply, he literally didn't even let raw lifters in the fucking gym. He didn't care. Like he didn't give a fuck. But he didn't, had no idea how big or small raw lifting was. He, care. he did not give a fuck. And to me, like that is not how I want to live, but that is sick to see someone stick to their guns that long. Uh, their whole life. It's a rare, it's like, <laughs> it's like, it's not even rare. It's like, it's like, it's why it's one impossible. One, yeah. It's impossible. What I felt like, um, I, my spot was that I had no business being there. He yeah. let me in to, to learn because he true because that's the other thing is if you really wanted to get strong, Louis would talk to you. Right. Obviously, he answered his own phone at right. the gym forever. So it's like kept showing up, kept showing up, kept trying to learn, kept getting beat by Amy, whatever. I make a few, <laughs> you know, weights. And I knew that because I didn't look like most of you guys, I could bridge the gap 
to higher end gen pop that actually wanted to learn some of this stuff. I'm not saying those guys couldn't find it on their own, but with the platform I had at the time with no, muscle yeah. farm and bodybuilding.com, I could take some of the stuff I learned in that gym and pass it on to more ge general people basically. Yes. And that was my spot. Right. And I realized that one, I would have never been even close to as good of a lifter programmer. If I didn't understand the intensity, all of those things. But then I was able to say, no, this is West side barbell. And yeah. I think like maybe some of them would have came on it. Some, maybe some don't, I'm not going to, I'm not on a high horse on that, but I knew I had a chance to spread it. Yes. To different people that might not have ever seen it potentially. Y yes. And still doing that and still doing that. So that's where like, whenever I post things or do things, I always give respect to it because I'm not this guy. If I don't experience that in my way, but then my way to pass it. And I think Tommy kind of knows this about me too. Like, that was like my spot basically, or Dude, at least that's a spot. I kind of the amount of kids that are fucking 19 to 25 that have never put on a pair of briefs that have West side barbell shirts because of you, you should be on their fucking payroll. Bro. <laughs> yeah. I'm saying, like, I've sold a lot of bands for them. I can should, tell you that you should, be, you should be getting fucking percentage of that. <laughs> their stock or something, because mm -hmm. I'm sure a lot of people have found that and, yeah. and that culture and stuff. And what you're doing here, I think is something special too. Thanks, man. And be, because of like that. And, and, and like you said, we talked on the phone where it's like, there's parts of this gym that you model after that, after 100%. Westside. And there's parts of the culture from Westside that you keep out of here. Yep. It's pretty obvious which ones are which. Yeah. yeah. Right. Um, and I look at that and I'm looking at my time at Westside, my time at Sweatshop my time at doghouse yeah my experiences with you here right and i'm looking at my crew and i'm like i got a lot of awesome stuff to draw from sure do to to be like this is how i want to run my fucking crew right hell yeah and i feel really really i don't want to say blessed but i feel really fortunate in, in that because um you do get to a chance to pull the best yeah. of the best like i'm taking like my programming is literally a mix of like your shit lou Dave and like a little bit of Laura and Shane sprinkled yeah. in there. And it's because like I've got, I, I put myself in those positions to, to learn all that stuff. So I think it is our job as, I don't want to say influencers. Yeah, it sounds bro. weird. Like, I, I don't want to fucking You're such say a that. good influencer. I, I, hate, <laughs> I, say I, hate, I hate that. I hate it so much, but I think it is our job it as is. somebody who, because dude, like a lot of the culture in all those gyms is, 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 that social media is stupid or social media, we're not into it or whatever. Yeah. And so guys like you or me or, you know, different people that have come there passing it on. A lot of this stuff just dies. Yeah. If you don't, if we don't do it, like a lot of this stuff just ceases to exist. And the only thing people have are book of methods and, yeah. uh, you know, the bench press guide. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And, you know, a lot of the guys who are, you know, even more so now, cause now lose, lose gone. Right. And so they're not going to be able to say they're on the forefront of the newest and best training because they don't have the mind there yeah. and they don't have the crews there for him to experiment on. And he knew that's why, how it would be. That's why he did what he did. Yeah. Dim Dimitri yeah. told me the first time I was there, he's like this Russian dude. And he's like, we are all just rats for Louis. <laughs> and it's true. <laughs> like we were just, character. <laughs> just trying to figure out what we were supposed to do and, and all the experiments and stuff. And now that they won't be able and to he do moved that. from Russia to be that one of those rats. Oh yeah. Exactly. <laughs> dude, he's, he's like, just experiment for Lou. So uh, <laughs> now that he's gone, like, you know, it's kind of on guys like you and myself to that have a crew and Dave too, and all that like yeah. to bring that stuff and keep it going yeah. and experiment with our guys. Yeah. And, and because Petri it kind of like, dish of savages, yeah, that's what I call it. Hell yeah. <laughs> and like, and follow that sort of that role in, yeah. in, in influencing others to look at this stuff and, and try new things. Fuck. Yeah. Dude, thanks for so much time and coming on the show. I appreciate you it's having fucking me. Fucking epic, bro. Yeah. I lo any chance I get to be out here, dude, I'm always like, I never want to be the dude who's like, can I come hang out? So yeah, I'm, yeah. like, like, I'm going to be in Ohio. These like, are always the best conversations. <laughs> Open invite, bro. You already know yeah, that. I, right. I appreciate that, man. Fucking roundtable podcast. My boy, Corey G, small arms, Danny at Trey Speed, who's in a different seat. The graphic gangster himself, Cole Shout Susek. Sam. Shout out Sam Adams, Max Denver Muscle, Anthony, you the motherfucker. Gang, gang, boy. let's go. All right, we out. Peace.